Howdy chaps, welcome back to another episode. This one's going to be more of an update, not going to be super long. Um, I did notice that we got a huge number of views on the last video at the tank farm. as 20,000 views, which is just mind-blowing. Um, I'm going to do a bit of a rundown of uh, my tank because I suspect there's a few people who've come along since that video because they like tanks so I thought I'd show them my tank and uh, then there's a bit more of an update on the cars and things and um, I'll show you what I've been doing with secondhand parts alrighty people um, hello to all the new subscribers there should be like close to a hundred of you who decided that my time is worth your time I don't really know um, but I thought I'd introduce my personal Stuart tank it is an M3 Stuart it's not an M3A1 it is not an M5 Stuart it's not an M3A3 it's just an M3 Stuart um, it is also a very early M3 Stuart by the fact that this tank uh, would have had the octagonal turret not the riveted version the welded version but still having a riveted hull so my tanks hull number is there, 1554 the number is also stamped on the mounting plate where one of the return rollers is it's next to the driver and it's also on the rear um, left hand tow hook so it's got um, 1554 in three unique places on the tank. This is a tank that actually saw combat, which is very rare because mostly the Stuarts that came to Australia, there's about 350 of them, didn't see any action. Actually, a lot of tanks that came to Australia did not see any action. Uh, some Matildas did, um, uh, about 20 odd. There's no, never been an exact number, but about 20 ish. Um, Stuarts went to Papua New Guinea in uh, Buna and all of those places and helped fend off the Japanese who were attacking the island. Um, this is one of the vehicles that saw combat at Buna. It also ended up in a hole, I believe it was a crater hole that was filled with water. They were driving along and just went bloop straight into it and it got stuck there for a couple of days but it did see action in the I think it's there was a plantation I can't remember if it was coconuts or bananas probably a banana I think I don't really know I can't remember exactly I knew it was a plantation where they were shooting up pill boxes and stuff like that I'm sure there's going to be a historian out there who will correct me but I know that this one was there um, I also have a couple of and what makes this tank particularly rare is I actually have photos of this tank um, not in direct combat but from World War II and I might actually stip them up right now right so you got the gist of that so you got one of it cruising along um, with the hull number quite clearly painted on the side and that's what they all had and the strangest thing is the censorship at the time uh, after the war scratched off all those things on the photos but for some reason a few tanks photos of tanks didn't actually get that happen to them um, so there's quite a few photos of tanks with hull numbers that are quite clearly visible and mine just happens to be one of them there's also a photo of it in a hole with the four guys leaning on it um, quite easy to determine uh, even though they're covering up the number you can see the damage on the front guard matches up perfectly with the other photo so it's not hard and there was not many I think there was two Stuart tanks that went to Buna with the octagonal turret this was one and the other one was a different hull number um, but this one also had a turret guard that went nearly all the way around I think it was a brush guard but the front piece was missing and it's really easy to pick it in photos because I think the other turret to Stuart that was a hex one either had it on all the way around or didn't have one at all but this one had it sort of the front section was missing which makes it really easy to pick up in photos of which tank it is um, also this one had the standard rear guards whereas the other 
hexagonal turreted Stuart had the tropical bins which are a completely different shape on the rear. So there's a lot of useless trivia about studying photos and whatnot. But yes, this one saw combat. It makes it particularly rare. Not many survived. Believe it or not, my friend in Victoria, who you would have seen in our last video, he actually has another Stuart. Uh, it's the one in the camo paint scheme. That one also was at Buna. Very rare the fact that there, us two chaps have both got one each that went there. But he unfortunately doesn't have any photos of his, whereas I have. Um, but anyway, I bought this tank from a lovely guy not too far from me, believe it or not. He was a bit of a military collector and he's just recently sold off pretty much everything he had. Um, I was able to snare this for as most people will know, cost me a decent XB Falcon <clears throat> um, and then I've spent some more money on it afterwards um, because this was cut down to track height basically everything from here up completely missing all it had on it was above the track height was these two rear plates that piece and the other one on the other side and nothing else uh, when I first saw it had no tracks had no bow gun in the machine put none of the glaciers plate was here I think this panel was here and the other one was cut down to the same height and that was it nothing no tracks um, no upper armor nothing um, so I have managed to piece it together as best I can um, and it's starting to look not shit <laughs> um, some people go oh you know it's sad that you're not using original pieces but you know how hard it is to find pieces of a tank that's 80 years old where only 350 of them ever came to Australia yeah good luck to you so this is the original piece of the tank so that's armor I was lucky enough to get this with the tank which is also a cast steel armored piece which is where the bow gunners machine guns through that section there to there is also an original piece that got with it that T piece which is the front section where the visors hang off also original this 40 mil thick plate here that's original same with this one uh, this I had to <laughs> cost me $500 but it is an inch thick gives you that hand snapping kind of noise um, so I had to make this one this is an original piece um, I am working my way through removing the bolts and um, you know I basically get this weld around it put it in the lathe and turn it into that because I don't want to actually see bolts and I'm going to come along with a little bit of bog in the tips of all these and bog them up I'm not I was going to weld them up but I decided if I ever want to undo them probably a bit of filler will probably be easier to undo than welds um, but as you can see they look like rivets their bolts they're going to all get replaced over time and the battery box lid which is just here does actually have two screws in it big screws um, in the time I've had it it's changed color a few times from completely rusty to uh, red and then it was uh, green but some of the purists decided that because the paint was shiny I shouldn't have wasted my time painting it but to be perfectly honest it's my tank I do what I want mm -mm, I do what I want um, but I eventually got some paint from my friend in Victoria which is actually <laughs> Australian army paint but it was the current green and so he gave me some green tan and black so I got the green and dumped a monumental amount of black into it and we've got this color which isn't miles off the original uh, I just wanted it not shiny um, he lent me some front guard sections um, my front guards are actually currently off being made by sheet metal Australia they also made these pieces um, I've got to add a little strip on here because um, if you know folding metal that would have been impossible um, or at least very difficult to fold that curve so um, I did get tracks with the tank but not fitted so I had to actually put them on myself and they were all broken into eight pieces so you had like one two three four five six seven eight it was like a stack of eights and I had to put them all together um, I do have some dodgy road wheels but you know that get that on big jobs but I'm not too worried about that right now I've still got to get this side of the sponson this is an original piece I should say as well but it came off a 
later Stuart which was welded uh, probably a hybrid knowing how that is and I have had fake rivets machined up and urethaned on and you can't pick them um, and obviously I've got hinges and stuff so and I had to have this piece made I've still got to do the rivets through there um, had this piece made but screwed it up because that's too high that needs to be probably an inch further down um, this is an original piece made my muffler brackets that side and that side I have a piece through here but I took it out temporarily um, and as you can see I fitted the tillers uh, the seat the seat base the pedals everything I've just been sort of assembling it um, and I managed to win two seat backs for about eight bucks each on an auction um, for some reason I won them for next to nothing which I was not sad about <laughs> I have some more original pieces over here um, I've got one of the I think I've got one and a half of these so down there is the other half I ne might need to get another one made and I have a piece of the roof um, there's an ammo bin original one but I'll be getting two new ones made some of the tower shaft um, it's lots of, and there's the fuel tanks over there now there's the mufflers some of the engine bay wirings there um, borrowed stuff that I'm going to get made so they're the rear guards that's one of the front guards um, uh, to the people who were telling me I'd never find a crown wheel for this thing in a, in a million years well I did actually because in that gearbox has actually got a half a tooth broken off one of these so I do have another one it's not great but uh, my theory goes if I've got that that one in there is not going to break anymore because that's how Murphy's Law works if you have the spare part you will never break the part that's in it um, and that's not great but if you wanted to make tank mobile and that's all you had you would use it um, I've got some uh, uh, oil coolers some original wiring voltage rig I may or may not use the terminal box that goes in the engine bay I've got some grousers I do have an oil tank I've lent it to a mate so you can make another one um, you know I made a tunnel they're my tops of the fuel tanks that go on the very top of the tank I had a the guy I got the tank off he actually was awesome and made me a clutch fork using original copies that cost me fourteen hundred dollars but I think it was money well spent because you can't drive a tank without it um, fire extinguisher brackets I've been lent some bits of original dashboard there's the other back to the other seat um, and here's my engine which is a seven cylinder continental 670 radial and if I can find someone with uh, more knowledge on it than me I'd love to have someone help me get this running I got sent some workshop manuals um, but reading them <laughs> and understanding them and then putting them to practice are two vastly different things um, it's going to take a lot of learning but I'd just love to find someone who knows these intimately and could go yeah I'll make that running a bit like me with that Cleveland that was sitting in the corner and I walked straight off that put it on the stand knew exactly what to do to make that run so I would love to find someone to do that for this um, I have a reproduction turret that is the hex type under there is the firewall and the top engine deck and it's actually a gun ring from a later military vehicle but until I find all the right parts it's probably what's going to hold the turret on top of the vehicle and make it spin around so as much as I'd love to use original parts I just don't have them and I have to make do with what I got and when I, the original parts do come up I will change them out it's just unfortunate how it's going to have to be um, and on to this topic you might ask yourself why is that Cleveland olive drab should be enough of a clue if I go like this right now don't disown me people um, but this engine and transmission are going into the tank temporarily and I use that word temporarily to make the tank mobile because um, have you tried moving one of those without it able to move itself it's very difficult um, I know for a fact and I have seen it on two separate occasions 
351 Cleveland's and automatics in tanks. I've seen one in the Valentine and I've seen one in another Stuart tank. And they don't get you up to top speed, but they're more than capable of moving the vehicle without having to tow it everywhere. So, the plan is to build a similar frame to that, not as big, because I don't actually want to wreck this. It's my really good engine built running in stand. Um, and I'll put in a clip right now. Yep, of the engine running and sounding good, nice and healthy. Um, so yeah, I don't want to wreck this stand because I've got to use it for a couple other engines. So I'm going to build another one smaller that bolts into the tank and that can be removed when this is ready to go in. I'm not going to put that in until I've seen it running on a stand on itself outside the vehicle. Um, so don't disown me. I want to put that in, but I don't know how to make it work. If I can find someone to help me make it work, then I will put it in the tank. It's not that hard. It's just really heavy because that weighs like 500 kilos. Um, but yes, the goal, ultimate goal is this in the tank. But temporarily, because I don't have any way of moving the vehicle easily, this is what's going to move it. And I know it can. They actually have similar horsepower, except the torque of this engine is about 75 times what that is. Um, so this can get the tank to uh, 60 kilometers an hour. This will probably get it to about half that. But you know, it doesn't matter. It'll work. Um, also, talking about making things out of secondhand parts, nearly everything attached to this motor was secondhand parts. The car be secondhand. I think I originally I haven't paid for it yet because my brother lent it to me. But the motor is his, the trans is mine, the extractors I got are traded for something else, the leads are old, the spark plugs are old. Um, I just wanted to make it run with what I had, I didn't really feel like spending a ton of money. So it's got a points distributor in it with a coil that I have no idea where that came from or what it's for. The alternator is made out of about three different ones. The distributor cap I found in a bucket of water. Uh, cleaned it out, put it on, seems to work perfectly. Carburetor, God only knows how old that is, but I think when I lent this engine to uh, Benny from Jet Ski's Garage, go check out his channel, I believe he might have put a kit through it because I know he rolled some bearings into this engine. Because when I got my hands onto it, it was running on four cylinders. So I set a, put a set of rings in it, I reground the valves and put it all back together and it ran on eight again. Then I lent it to him, and he set, put a set of bearings in it, because I said they were a bit meh. And then he ran that in his coupe for quite a while. Um, let him enjoy his car for ages, and then he's pulled that out, and he's putting some sort of Godzilla engine in, whatever that is. Uh, and he gave me this back, with a manual conversion on it, which I then traded for that C4. Long story short, here we are, 351 C4 automatic. Uh, the oil is new and the oil filter, <laughs> but there's so many secondhand parts. It's sort of I enjoy making things out of what most people throw away. Like, not a lot of money was spent to make that run. Um, I do think the radiator is cactus though, because <laughs> even with my big workshop fan, the thermo fan's running. Even though they're not sitting on it properly, there was a lot of air going through the front of that, and it was still getting hot. Uh, and I did time the engine while I had it there and it runs beaut. Um, so this engine trans is going to go into the tank. I've got to build a frame for it and it's going to sit sort of in the back there and the tail shaft comes through and it'll join up to there. 
and I'll build a tunnel over it and I won't and nothing is going to be permanent it's all going to be removable um, because I want the radial in there eventually so the people who might disown me for putting a non-original engine in please don't hate me I just need to make it mobile um, so that's what the plan is ah and enough of that onto the EJ which a lot of people seem to love Ole, over this way. Watch out. Ooh. I have been slowly working on this. Watch out. There we go. Uh, new points, new condenser, new cap, new leads, new spark plugs, original coil. So who knows? Fuel pump was rebuilt, kit put through it, new rubber line, steering column was completely rebuilt and painted looking lovely engine bay was done got some of these wow, wiring tires got a horn I traded another horn to another viewer for the um, trans cross member which turned up yesterday stoked so if you're watching this thanks bud um, new water pump new belt pulleys blasted painted and put back on new hoses haven't got any clamps yet um, I do think the radiator might need to be rebuilt uh, a little bit concerned I'd actually like to see if I could find an old school repairer who could actually repair it because it's the original honeycomb core out of this radiator which is what they had in the factory you can still see the NASCO label there I'd really like to find someone who could fix that um, or at least pressure test it and potentially fix any leaks um, I'd really like to keep the original core so I suspect that might coming back out um, cleaned up the generator don't know if it works cleaned up the starter motor painted it and if people Oop, I just had a phone call it's okay um, like I was saying uh, rebuilt the generator or at least I think I did <laughs> find out later on the next episode of Graham's life um, so it's in there looking lovely the starter motor I've had a few people tell me, oh my god, how much blue do you want with your starter motor? Believe it or not, that's the colour they wear. It's not quite the colour. They're a little bit lighter than that. Same colour as the coil. But that's as close as I could get. They were blue. And on the other earlier Holdens, I think, they were black. So I think that was one of the ways they told them between 6 and 12 volt. Even though the starter motors look the same, I think the 6 volts were black and the 12 volts were blue. They are blue. And they look like that they're all blue so don't hate me <laughs> I've seen enough original ones to know that they're all blue um, Peter Anderson put a kit well no he hydroblasted plated and did all the carby up for me I have then since come along and bought a rebuild kit and just put some gaskets and things and the new plunger pump thing in the carby so the carby's rebuilt fuel pumps rebuilt new oil there's no filter because it's um, a grey motor I have noticed I've got a slight oil leak down there, so I need to actually put a new washer on the sump plug, which will be fun to do that without losing a ton of oil. Um, <laughs> good job, idiot. <laughs> um, but yes, the EJ is progressing along quite nicely. Um, and when I have a little bit more funds, I will be buying some door skins and some new guards for this. So we have the turret for the tank the turret ring for it some of the top deck the engine for the tank the temporary engine emphasis on temporary please don't hate me for that uh, and my tank which you know should be quite good um, also very rare and um, I do have a patreon for this so for those wanting to help fund it which I would be so happy for um, and the people who are already uh, on my patreon there's about 16 of you and I know who you are um, thank you so much um, my patreon is great uh, patreon is XA coop guy just look it up and you'll find it um, it the f the patreon helps immensely with this put it that way um, also on the patreon I do put every little thing that I'm doing on this tank on there so me putting the mud guards on or painting the tank or fitting a few things or it pretty much the whole build is on my patreon so if you want to get really in-depth in it and want to help out go along follow that 
um, you don't have to, but you can if you like. Um, also, it's a nice way to contact me directly if you have any interesting want things you want to talk about, etc. Um, so, yeah, not a exciting video. Just work, work, work. So got the coupe, land out, and the combi van. Um, still got a million things on the go, but they're starting to look pretty good actually. And now I know a lot of people want to see videos on the stuff. I might do some, but the problem is the jobs that I'm currently doing on this. There's probably already a few videos on my channel of the exact same jobs. And I don't want to film it 75 times because it's annoying. So until I find an interesting task on that coupe, I probably won't film it. Although I am thinking on the that XB one, it needs an entire plenum chamber and everything done. So I may do that one when the time comes. So just bear with me. <sighs> so much stuff. Anyway, I shall love you and leave you chaps and chapettes and I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Stick with me for more videos if you like. If you want to follow the Patreon, look up XA Coop Guy. I'd be more than happy to have you help out. Um, and thanks for watching.